Okay. And let us begin with the sign of our faith in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will begin with the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus shared with his friends shortly before he was given the death penalty by the government. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk today about friendship okay we're moving we, we talked about relationships and the and the church teachings about relationships and intimacy but today we're going to talk about something that we that most of us have experience with and that is friendships okay especially for young people this is a very important topic and we are going to take our information from uh, a great part of our information from something called the book of sirach the book of Sirach, okay? Maybe you've heard of Sirach before, maybe not. It is a book in the in the Bible. Um, one that, uh, whose writer, whoever the Sirach was, um, clearly was inspired um, by God to, to teach us some truths about friendships. Uh, actually, not just friendships. Sirach also uh, has a lot to say about all kinds of different relationships and advice for, for young people. Um, but today we're focusing on friendship, okay? But before we go look at Sirach, oh, and, um, and, and there will be a, a worksheet, um, a short little worksheet assignment uh, to, to go along with uh, the book of Sirach, okay? But before we go do, do anything further, let me uh, remind you that CPTs are now due. This is CPT week, folks. So um, by, the, by the end of this week, you must have your CPTs in. Now, I, I get to see you uh, one more time, uh, at least. I think the one group comes twice, I think, this week. One comes once. And if you'd like to go over something with the CPT before you submit it, there will be an opportunity for in-class at that time, okay? One day this week or once or twice for some of you, and uh, and that's great, okay? We, we can do that. Um, otherwise, they all should be in, and I'll be grading them this coming weekend. Uh, and then and then we will be doing some a little bit of judging on the side, some teachers and I, and then the the the, the top um, the top few will go on and enter the um, uh, YPI competition uh, at the end of the year. okay, and your your charity, you just might get chosen uh, your presentation and your charity to receive some money. Okay, so that that that's pretty exciting. So do your best to wrap up those CPTs nicely, right? The um, slideshow and the two social media posts, all posted or embedded on your website. Okay, so you, again, if you have any questions about <clears throat> hang that in, <coughs> excuse me, or or um, completing it. Okay, you can ask me there. Um, seeing as we are uh, talking about friendships this week, we've got a special play pose to you uh, for you today. It's a little bit shorter than than usual, but uh, this play pose it is about friendship. I made this some years ago, and um, every now and then when I get to this time, I use it. So I'm just I'm just kind of putting it in there right now, making sure I assign it to everybody, I believe it's a sign. So please head over to playposit.com, complete today's introduction, interactive playposit video activity, and we'll see you in a few minutes. All right, thank you very much, everybody. Looks like uh, most people are finished. I see Gurmeet G still finishing up. Uh, if I would ask you to uh, pause, please, and um, and then we will. Uh, you can get back and finish that after the lesson. And and there's a few people that haven't started. Uh, I, I do recommend you finish those play poses. It's on a timely matter. Okay, you don't want to be scrambling at the end trying to finish them. Not uh, effective way to learn something or do something. 
But for the majority of you, thank you for getting that done on time. Now, all right, we are going to now go back to speaking about our lesson today, which is on the friendships, the lesson of friendships. And, and we're going to look at the Catholic Church. And But even before we do that and look at the, the, the view, the official view, um, what is some of the advice about friendships that we get from the Bible? Well, let's look at Jesus' story. Who did Jesus choose as his friends and why? Okay, and who were these friends? Who were these early people um, that, that Jesus entrusted, you know, his time with? Um, and who did he pick, right, to be his closest friends? So uh, the first thing you'll notice when you see the list, and of course we're talking about the disciples, is these are not people uh, these aren't exactly the, the, the sort of most educated and um, top uh, top and most successful people in town. So I'm going to share my screen here, okay? And we're going to go over this article um, about the disciples, okay? Who were these? Who were these 12? Okay. So from the... Um, from Luke, we have a, um, the, the brief introduction, you know, how, how Jesus, when he, uh, when he came down from the mountain, when he came down from his meditative prayers, uh, he called disciples and chose 12, right? He also called them apostles. If you recall correctly, he, he, walked, some, uh, he walked around and picked some of them right from where th they were working. Some of them were, you know, fishing, and others were just sort of... Um, hanging around none of them particularly extremely successful or or, or, or well talented um, okay so let's have a look uneducated all Jewish right we're talking about you know Jesus is Jewish so he chose he chose um, you know people that were around him in in the same neighborhood um, similar to him that way in the background and I think we all um, tend to do that sometimes especially when we start off our our friends and family our family tries to um maybe your parents you'll notice you know maybe uh, if you're from a certain background maybe your parents close friends are from the same sort of background um you know and then whatnot uh, but this is particularly true in jesus time where uh, it was actually believe it or not quite multicultural you know the the area um would have been uh, wouldn't have been all uh, Jewish people certainly not right you know Roman Empire was a was a very uh, robustly multi uh, cultural place um, in 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 many ways and certainly Romans were not Jews right typical Romans okay so Jesus was a part of a minority group and he picked minority um, friends uh, but they were also very simple um, and you know, it took Jesus three years of ministry and training to bring them up to where he uh, felt that um, they could carry on his his work. Um, and not all of his choices were the best. I mean, we all know the story of uh, Judas uh, Ikarat, right? Judas, who um, betrayed Jesus, right? Now, Jesus would have known all this, you know, um, but he you know it's a lesson for us too right and we'll get to that in a minute um so here we go let's start with let's start with um the the uh the names okay so they're a little confusing right there's uh simon who is called peter um sometimes they have different names right like you know it's actually common enough believe it or not people who are called differently you know, my name is Daniel, could be Dan, you know, they call me Dan here at work, or sometimes it's it's completely different, something, right? It's not very uncommon. Um, <clears throat> then he also picked a lot of family members, so, you know, it wasn't just Simon, uh, a.k.a. Peter, but um, uh, his brother, Andrew, okay? And then a lot of the names follow the, uh, you know, who were they were sons of, who were they... Notice it's all the same gender, right? So Jesus' friends are all 
male. So this is not, um, um, you know, an, 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 an intimate thing uh, or mixed gender thing, right? It's common. I think most of us tend to have similar um, friends, you know, guys, guys, girls, girls, and whatnot, right? Uh, but not always. So um, James, the son of Zebedee, and, and also his brother. So we got a few brothers in there. Philip and, Bartho and Bartholomew, a.k.a. Nathaniel. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. I mean, that's an odd choice. Tax collectors were not exactly the most popular guys in town, all right? It was a dirty job. It was a job that, it was like the, it's like the parking ticket guy, right? You know, that's not a very nice job because it's, you know, the kind of job everybody hates. Everybody hates when they see the ticket on their windshield or imagine, you know, uh, you're walking toward your car and the guy's writing a ticket. You know, G Jesus picked somebody uh, who was uh, basically the parking ticket guy or the tax collector to be his best buddy. Uh, very interesting. Okay. And of course, you know, I mean, they're just showing us, um, you know, these are, these are people. They're good people. They just, this is a job. It's a legitimate job, right? So we often judge people, you know, uh, what effect they have on us at the time, right? Oh, he's writing a ticket, you know, he's a jerk or something. But that's his job, right? He's, and it's an honest job, you know? He's, it's not a nice job, but it's an honest job. It has to be done by somebody, right? Um, James, the son of Alphaeus, or a.k.a. James the Less. Um, Thaddeus, a.k.a. Judas, son of James. Not that James. Simon the Zealot and Judas... Iskarat or Ikarat, the one who betrayed him. Okay, and that's that's very common. It's very particular. He's always referred to as the betrayer because there's two Judas, right? There's um, um, Thaddeus, Judas, and then there's um, Judas uh, I, the betrayer. Let's take a little closer here. So Peter, Peter and Andrew. Okay. Um, two brothers, uh, and you can see here that they, they, um, you know, live together in Capernaum, okay, uh, and they were fishermen, and they worked beside the two other brothers, James and John. Very, very convenient. Jesus decides to go down to find some friends along the dock, and he finds four guys, right, two sets of brothers. Um, that happen to be friends already. So it's kind of easier to join a group uh, um, of friends sometimes, you know, where there's already some, some friendships, and if you be, become part of the group, you get instant group there, right? Um, okay, so Peter and Andrew, they were followers of John the Baptist. Um, Andrew first introduces his older brother to, his older brother Peter to Jesus. Okay, when they were with John the Baptist, remember, because Jesus went to John the Baptist as well. So this is the kind of event that sort of um, brings these guys together. Okay. Um, and then they left John the Baptist and then started following Jesus. Now, Peter is very interesting. Peter, uh, a.k.a. Simon, or Simon Peter, uh, the rock, uh, he's the one who... Um, is the is the beginning of the church after Jesus, right? He's like the first pope. You know, he's the head of the what is today the Catholic Church. He's the, was the first one, okay? Uh, and yet he denied Jesus not once or twice, but three times when um, Jesus was arrested. You know, I don't know who that guy is, right? That, 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 you know, there's Peter, the one who went on to be the first pope um, with so much responsibility and respect, and yet he's, he, you know, um, he was not the best friend, right? He did not have that quality. So why did Jesus pick him? You know, he knew, knew all this about everybody. Why pick him? Um, it, Peter turned out to be an excellent guy, actually despite the fact that he, you know, um, wasn't the best friend or the most loyal when the time the push came to shove, you know, he was scared, right? He was scared. I think all of us are scared sometimes of what of things that happen and what could happen. And young friendships are, 
fragile, right? They're not um, intimate marriage commitments, you know, and your friends today may not be your friends five years from now, right? I don't, I don't really um, keep in touch that much with people I knew in high school. I can't think of hardly anybody, nobody, right? Maybe one or two people for a while after I, you know, went on. Um, but even today, it's uh, I have a different group of friends, you know, usually the parents of, of my kids' friends, right? That kind of thing, because that happens to be who we interact with a lot, right? So things, um, you know, life changes and moves on and new things happen and friends come and go. And Jesus is making a very interesting point here, right? He didn't choose Peter to be his friend because he wanted... He felt Peter would be the excellent friend and loyal friend. He chose Peter knowing that Peter is a good person. And Peter has the qualities and the abilities to be a good leader. And that's what Peter ended up doing, right? That was his purpose. Jesus needed somebody to begin this church and, and lead this church, right? Following his death and resurrection. And he knew Peter would be the one. So everybody has something good about them, a good quality, right? Um, and, you know, friendships, people may disappoint in friendships, but, I mean, we're all human, right? So um, Peter was such a good leader to the point where he was so um, super loyal to the church, he ended up dying for it, right? And being um, arrested and dying a martyr. I think it says here he was crucified. We believe he was crucified. Okay, and he was humble too. Okay, most of these guys, very humble when Jesus meets them. Um, so, you know, they, they know they're flawed as well, right? They're not perfect. Peter's brother, Andrew. Um, what can we see here? He, you know, he was the kind of the first to follow Jesus, the most excited, okay? And um, very devoted. Uh, not very dominant person though, but you know, a good preacher and whatnot. Uh, and um, uh, he also died. You'll see, you'll see most of these guys die a, a, a martyr death, right? So remember, being Christian after, right after Jesus in those days was illegal, right? You couldn't practice any other faith other than, you know, there was only a couple of accepted things, right? Judaism was, Jews to be Jewish was kind of tolerated. Then there was the Roman faith, you know, with the with the sun gods and whatnot. And then um, anything else like like Christianity, like I mean, you couldn't, right? They 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 just gave the death penalty to the leader, Jesus. And then you you know, if you were caught practicing, you were caught being a follower. Still, you were you were you were also killed, right? And most of these guys, that's, that's what happened. So there's uh, Andrew and Peter, James and John. Okay. James and John, and notice that some of these people have the sons of, and this is important because these were these are the lines of descent showing that they are come from this Jewish family. Okay, and these, these Jewish families would have been followers of the Old Testament, right? Just like Jesus came from the, that long line, you know, all the way from you know Abraham, King David, etc. etc. John Mary Jesus, right? Okay, so um there's some evidence that says here uh, that this father Zebedee was some was a man of affluence. What does that mean? It means he he might have been a successful person, okay? Um, but uh, you know, I mean, he was even he even had servants and whatnot. He had a fishing business, okay? Uh, but James and John, I mean, you know, no, none of the disciples or, or apostles were particularly known to be. Um, successful or wealthy okay so here we have um, you know two sons from a from a what could be like a wealthy family but they don't take advantage properly right they fail in, to continue this um, this this wealth and take advantage of what the opportunity uh, right that's presented to them they're kind of like losers right Many of these disciples, most of these disciples, if not all of them, they were they were the losers, right? They, they were not, um, you know, it wouldn't be take much to poke fun at them, 
okay? And there's a good example. James, okay, the older brother of John, uh, he's, uh, he's a rather quiet person on the team. Okay, he's part of this, um, he's one of the closest three to Jesus, okay? All right. Um, he was, uh, him, Peter, and John, says here, they were, um, when, when Jesus raised uh, uh, Yaris' daughter from the dead, okay, they, they witnessed quite a few things, and they were in the garden when Jesus was arrested, okay? Um, James, the first disciple to be beheaded, and martyred okay and his uh, martyrdom is actually recorded so he was the first one killed for following Jesus John Jesus really apparently loved John okay um, as far as friendship is concerned for our lesson today um, no, no, nothing too uh, interesting there's some interesting uh, some more stuff coming up we got Philip okay uh, we don't know much about him um, you know, he was a good evangelist, right? So everybody ended up, most, most of them, I shouldn't say everybody, most of them ended up being kind of good, right? Uh, being good Christians after Jesus. Okay, we got Nathaniel, a.k.a. Bartholomew. Um, here was a guy who, who was showing a bit of prejudice, okay? Um, you know, so some of them were not even some of them were rude and, and didn't have good manners or spoke ill of others, right? Again, typical human characteristics, you know, they weren't perfect. Um, and Jesus felt, you know, it's, it's, I mean, why go and pick people that are, you know, kind of uh, behaving, you know, properly? They're not the lost sheep, right? It's like Jesus, he walked, he walked what he talked, right? He preached the story of, you know, we got to help the lost sheep, not the 99 that are good. So he, that's who he picked as his friends, lost sheep, okay? Uh, again, died as a martyr. So uh, ordinary, unrefined men, okay? Uh, farmers, fishermen. I'll post this so you guys can read this if you want on your own after. Okay, the tax collector, we already talked about the tax collector. Very interesting, okay? Um, then we have um, Thomas, um, doubting Thomas. Thomas did not believe 100%. He was not somebody um, you can trust, right? Jesus couldn't trust Thomas. Why would you have a friend that doesn't really trust, that you can't really trust? Why would you have that kind of friend? Well, sometimes we have friends, you know, we enjoy their company. Right? Doesn't mean we put all our faith into them. And you know, Jesus is showing us, you know, you can have friends um, and enjoy their company, but you cannot put your trust in everyone. Not all friends, not all friendships will be worthy of trust. Okay. Um, you know. Uh, but Thomas did well as a Christian. Uh, he worked in India. And the suggestion is that he um, he was pierced by a spear, okay? Um, not very good. James the Less, okay? Uh, what was the thing about the, him called being less? Um, yeah, not much of, he's not really mentioned much in the scripture. So, uh, poor guy. It looks like he was stoned to death. Simon the Zealot, uh, a political activist. Okay, zealot with fire, you know, fire, political activist. Well, you know, um, good person to have on a team if he's if he's on your side because he's going to actually go out and do some protesting or really be um, fired up to to make some changes. Okay, fiercely loyal, amazing passion. Okay, um, excellent. Then we have um, the first Judas, not the one that betrayed Jesus. Jesus, we get the son of James. Okay, nothing that interesting here. A kind of obscure sort of guy. Okay, club to death, it says, apparently. And then we have finally the most famous, maybe, for all the wrong reasons, the traitor, Judas. So why would Jesus um, 
well, you know, in every group of friends, um, some are maybe more trustworthy than others, but um, Judas didn't even, didn't just deny Jesus, he betrayed him, right? He put, he led the authorities, the police to find Jesus. Yeah, there he is, he's over there. He helped Jesus get arrested. He ratted on him, he turned him in. That's, um, that's terrible. Okay, so what is up with that story? Um, it's, it's even though Judas spent three years with Jesus loyally, in the end he betrayed him. So you never know, you never know what might happen. Okay, even the most loyal friend, you know, and, um, and yet he's still a, he's still a apostle, right? You know, there, there, there was, um, you know, um, but you never know what might happen. So even good people do bad, bad things. Okay. Let's have a look uh, quickly. I'm just going to show you this brief video here. Um, how were these apostles, though, how, as a group, how did they help the church and Christianity to grow? Let's have a look at this. The disciples uh, that we see in Jesus' life, these 12 apostles that at the end of his life, uh, because of Judas's turning away, were left with 11. And, and then as we move through the New Testament, there are others that are given the title apostle, certainly the most notable, that being Paul, but also we see early on in the book of Acts, Matthias. Their role in the early church were, was to serve as the leadership. Uh, they were the ones who had been the eyewitnesses to the life of Jesus. They could testify firsthand that we know these things to be true. We know that this was the man who was the Messiah, who died on the cross, who rose from the tomb. And so they acted as the shepherds, as uh, those early leaders of the, of the New Testament church that then were often sent out to plant new churches, to begin new congregations, and to do primarily the work of teaching in the New Testament. And we see that it's, it's pretty critical that it's set for us a pattern for the leadership of church, for all churches throughout all of the ages, that those early leaders were to be given, their, they were to give their time to the Word and to prayer. And that was their primary ministry, and that, that the rest of the church would be equipped uh, to do all sorts of other ministries as well. But in the early days of the New Testament church, as we see it recorded in the book of Acts, the apostles were the primary eyewitnesses and therefore had the primary testimony as to who Jesus was. Okay. So there you have it, folks. These were the people left behind to just explain and who or and what Jesus uh, was. Now, Clearly, they did a good job. Christianity went on to be the largest faith in the world. Um, uh, you know, there's still a billion Christian uh, registered Christians today. Um, certainly, within 300 years of Jesus, Jesus gets put to death. He gets the death penalty. The government arrests him and gives him the death penalty. And 300 years later, which isn't a hugely long time, it's about as long as, let's say, America's been around, Christianity becomes the official religion of the entire Roman Empire. That's, that, that, that's really, you know, that's insane, right? The amount of, it was illegal, and then became the official religion of the entire empire. So these guys did their job. They did their job despite the fact they had all their flaws, and they were kind of like losers, and they weren't the most successful, and, you know, they each of them, you know, had something or other, not the best, you know, some weren't even the best friends, but they, you know, and one of them just completely took off and became, you know, uh, left the group, if you will. Um, they, the rest of them did, the, did an amazing job, just like Jesus thought they would. Now, let's go back further. So now we're going to get to the Old Testament a little bit. We're going to have uh, Sirach. Who's this Sirach person? Well, not that important who he is. What's more important is um, his advice 
okay his advice to to all of us about friendship um Syrax advice has been so good that to this day it continues to ring true it is unchanged it is unchanged okay nobody can ever point to this these are pieces of advice here and say you know what um that's not true it it is true okay so um there's a quite a bit here okay i'm going to ask you to work on it um mostly on your own but I will, we'll, go, we'll go through a couple of examples here together okay and look at that right from the beginning um Sirach in 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 the, in the 37th uh, chapter here when he starts talking about friendship anyone can claim to be your friend but some people are friends in name only so just like Peter just like Judas I you know um, at some point your friend may do something that like a real friend you know you would think wouldn't do okay but this is uh, this is common this is not some this is not like and you may do something to a friend that your friend may have never expected you to do okay so the important thing here is it's not that you're a bad person right or your friends a bad person it's just at that moment something else is more important than the friendship you know it's usually because um, they're selfish you know or we can get selfish where we think of us before somebody else and but that's that's the nature of humanity right if we weren't selfish even a little bit you know we wouldn't be around right it takes a little bit of selfishness to survive right okay and move forward so um he says the grief caused when a close friendship turns sour is as bad as death oh yes it's not nice if a friend betrays you it's brutal right because you trust this person you you felt this closeness but then you know this evil impulse we have why was it ever formed how did it manage to cover the earth with deceit some people will be your friend as long as things are going well but they will turn against you when trouble comes a real friend will help you against your enemies and protect you from the fight never forget such companions in battle share the results of your victory with them this is this is super interesting right Sirach is saying you know what it's normal not all your friends are going to be top but there there will be some there will be one there will be you know at one point you will be a good friend and stand by somebody even when it's hard and when it's suffering and he suggests that you share you you share something good with them right whatever good comes about you share with them so don't forget about them either don't forget about the friends that stuck with you right when when it wasn't nice to stick with you and and that's something i think all of us are guilty of doing right or having it done to us you know being forgotten or forgetting okay um then he goes on and he gives a little bit um about you know who you should take advice from okay but so it's it's interesting um you know it's quite quite truthful um don't ask a woman for advice about a rival okay some of this is very interesting don't ask a lazy person about work a stingy person about gratitude i mean i love this this is great okay uh don't ask a coward about war you know you need to be you need to be kind of judgmental a little bit and who are you asking like what are you asking about right so you wouldn't ask a banker advice about um um banking i mean they're, they're trying to sell you something right they're trying to sell you their particular bank or whatever so you know you know you don't go ask them um you know what's the best mortgage it'll be, they'll say my mortgage right and when it comes to friendship you have to know who your friends are okay sometimes we just want them to be just like us oh it's just like me right we're the same you know we like the same things we're like, but actually no everyone's an individual you find that out when you get older right there's this nothing like you right <clears throat> 
just at the time you have something in common. Maybe it's high school you have in common or whatever. But soon you won't have as much in common. So look at these. Um, okay, so there's some um, advice here. And what I'd like though for you to do, and I'm going to give you some time for this now, okay, is there is um, there's some parts here. So, and I've just taken, believe me, this is a very short part. Sirach goes on and on. There, there is so much in Sirach. It's an entire book of pieces of advice. So there's much more advice than this when it comes to friendships, intimate relationships, parents, children, you know, being, you know, how to deal with your parents and whatnot. Um, each of these paragraphs here, um, wisdom and confidence and controlling the appetite. I want you to read each, uh, read that page basically. And in each one, pick an advice sentence from each section. Okay. And why do you think that's important? So please review uh, Sirach, this particular um, set of advice here. Okay, a small sample. And then I encourage you on your own to go look up the book of Sirach and go read about some other piece of advice. You'd be, you'd be really surprised if some really neat stuff in there. Okay, some really neat stuff. Um, how to deal with boyfriend, girlfriend, stuff like this, okay. Um, some of it's, um, you know, some of it reads kind of funny. You'd be like, oh, you'd be shocked, you know. But, um, yeah, it's all in there. Sirach uh, goes through a lot. So that page is for you. I will, I will post this now, okay, into our, into our classwork here. And if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to ask on the chat side. All right. Just let me get this posted over here for you. Okay. We're winding down, uh, just as an aside here while I'm uh, posting. We are winding down the course, ladies and gentlemen, right? We have till November 12th. Um, so we've got, uh, you know, two weeks left. Uh, CPTs are due this week. Um, I'll be going over, you know, the rest of the stuff the week after. Um, please, please don't wait last minute to try and finish something. Uh, it's just not going to work out for you. Make sure you're doing things in a timely manner, okay? And um, blog posts and websites, make sure that's up to date and everything looks good, okay? All right, I'm just going to um, make sure that this is... Um, the worksheet I'm just adding this here uh, yeah so as we wind down we, we will be doing a few more of these kind of um, little uh, knowledge type assignments okay little worksheets and things um, okay we haven't done enough don't forget the um, you know, we started off doing a little bit bigger projects and things, and not, now we're kind of just, okay, I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to assign that. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining me today. Um, it's talking about friendship, talking about the, 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 the basis of friendship, uh, Jesus showing us what friendship is and how to pick friends and being aware that no, you know your friends are not perfect and we're all individuals we're all faulty we're all flawed but there's a good good to all of us there's good to everybody uh in some way shape or form um Sirach giving us some great advice uh as we move forward to the modern age and um i hope you enjoy working on that okay thank you very much and have a good day all right bye, -bye. Sir, have a good day Sir. Oh, yes. Hi. Can I ask you a question about my CPT? Yes. Who am I speaking with? Himmel. Hi, Himmel. How are you doing? 